SpaceX has long inspired us by its iterative approach to making science fiction a reality. In its effort to recover and reuse parts of their Falcon 9 rockets, they've achieved major strides. Initially, their successful landing and reuse of the rocket's first stage set a remarkable precedent, sending shockwaves throughout the space rocket industry. However, challenges in terms of budget and technical complexity emerged for SpaceX as they moved to reusing the second stage in the payload fairing. Despite these hurdles, SpaceX persevered and ultimately achieved an impressive 99% success rate in recovering and refurbishing the fairings that shocked all the other competitors. So, how did SpaceX make this insane change? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Amid much fanfare, SpaceX commenced the landing of Falcon 9 rockets in 2015 and introduced their reuse within a mere two years. The initial stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, featuring nine engines and a substantial mass, constituted approximately half of the rocket's manufacturing expenses, showcasing significant time and cost savings for SpaceX. However, like most other launch vehicles, the Falcon 9 rocket has two other major components. There's a second stage that aids in lifting payloads into orbit, and for most missions, a payload fairing that shields this satellite during its passage through the atmosphere. SpaceX explored the possibility of recovering the second stage of the Falcon 9, but it concluded that it wasn't feasible without significant modifications that could significantly reduce the rocket's payload capacity. But what about those payload fairings? They're manufactured as two halves through an intensive labor process involving the placement of composite materials, not unlike paper mache. Producing these fairing halves is time-consuming and costs approximately $6 million to do both halves. Several years ago, SpaceX's founder, Elon, challenged his employees to go catch the fairings. You got $6 million bucks falling from the sky, Musk famously said, but how do you do it? Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's VP of Launch and Recovery, mentioned that initially, the company's technical team theorized that they had to catch them with a net before they plunged into the ocean. Donchev spoke about the fairing recovery effort during the Summit at Sea program earlier this year. The engineer's concern was that allowing the fairing and its delicate electronic equipment to come into contact with seawater would lead to significant corrosion. They believed that this would render the fairing halves unusable. Therefore, SpaceX's technical team developed a complex recovery process, and the company successfully executed it for the first time in January 2020. The vessel is equipped with a colossal net strategically positioned atop its deck. This net plays a crucial role in capturing the descending fairings. However, it's not just the net that makes this system remarkable. It's the integration of cutting-edge technology that truly sets it apart. SpaceX has implemented AI-controlled parachutes on the fairings themselves, enabling them to maneuver autonomously during their descent. As the Falcon 9 rocket carries its payload into space, the ship positions itself in the expected descent path of the fairings. This strategic alignment allows the net-equipped ship to be in the right place at the right time. Meanwhile, the AI-controlled parachutes guide the fairings with remarkable precision toward their designated recovery zone. However, SpaceX's journey in perfecting fairing recovery has been far from smooth sailing. Fairings occasionally struck the nets but failed to detach due to malfunctioning parafoils or they were pulled off the nets, resulting in damage. Unpredictable rough seas added to that complexity often causing damage to the recovery vessels themselves. Furthermore, SpaceX's wet fleet had invested in considerable resources in building and operating specialized vessels, such as Mistree and Mischief. These vessels required ongoing maintenance, crew training, and other operational expenses. In addition, the intricate nature of fairings and the complex process of mid-air retrieval introduced a degree of unpredictability and associated risks that the company had to contend with. The occasional damage incurred by fairings during dry recovery attempts, coupled with the wear and tear on the massive nets and recovery equipment, escalated costs and diminished the expected savings. The reality is, most of the time, it's a choppy hot mess with seven to nine foot waves, a super short period, and a ton of wind, Donchev said. So even though we caught it once, our actual success rate for bringing fairings home was quite low. It was under 50%, 40%. Our ability to get fairings ready to fly was choking our launch rate. Is there a way to further maximize the fairing's performance and avoid overly complex technical requirements? Now, I want you to put on your spacecraft engineer's hat and get ready to explore an ingenious, yet surprisingly simple solution that's eluded most people's minds. 
Before diving into this thought experiment, let's arm you with some crucial data that might lead you to a conclusion akin SpaceX's engineering team. Or, who knows, you might even stumble on a better solution. Although, I must caution you that SpaceX has likely explored every possibility. Let's start by visualizing what a SpaceX fairing looks like. Picture this. It stands at a towering 13.9 meters, stretches out to 5.2 meters in width, and weighs in at approximately 800 pounds. <laughs> yes, you hear that right. It's an 800-pound object hurtling down from the heavens at terminal velocity. So if you don't manage the impact on the water surface, it's bound to pose a considerable challenge. In fact, it could wreak havoc on the fairing structure. Spread across the surface of the fairing are these boxes, which are sound-absorbing pads and electronic components that have become nearly useless whenever they come into contact with salt water. Now, see if you come to a similar conclusion as SpaceX's engineers. What's the issue with the fairings falling into the water? Damaging electronic components? And what happens to a structure with the size, shape, and weight of these fairings? Well, it's essentially a boat, a floating fairing on the water's surface. The only solution SpaceX had to implement was to move the electronic components distributed across the entire surface of the fairing and move them toward the upper sections. This solution, coupled with keeping the fairing oriented with the open side facing up, meaning that water can hardly enter the fairing, may perhaps carry some splash. However, with the electronics on top, there are no more issues. This was mentioned in Donchev's speech when he spoke about the algorithm that SpaceX uses when it designs new technology to solve problems. Essentially, it provides a roadmap for innovating. When you're fundamentally innovating a new technology, you're wrong, he said. It's just a question of how wrong, because your ability to learn is changing constantly. So where you start is certainly not where you're going to end up. The algorithm begins with two steps. Make the engineers less dumb and delete the part or process step. This means engineers should think outside the box and challenge existing requirements. They should then ask whether they're solving the right problem. And now they have a much simpler system using a regular boat with a regular crane to remove the fairing halves from the ocean. This is entirely sufficient, allowing the company to go from a success rate of less than 50% in fairing recovery to a 99% likelihood of retrieval. And now the limit can be quickly extended in a few weeks to fly back on another rocket. Essentially, Donchev explained that you iterate on the first two steps as many times as necessary before moving on to the final three steps, optimize, accelerate, and automate. Applying this philosophy to fairing recovery, SpaceX has demonstrated its commitment to simplifying and optimizing the process. Instead of relying on complex and unreliable methods, SpaceX's innovative approach involves a modified ship with a net and automatically controlled. This simplified system not only improves the reliability of fairing recovery, but also reduces the resources required for each mission. It embodies Musk's philosophy of making requirements less dumb, improving the design, accelerating the process, simplifying and optimizing, and ultimately automating the process to achieve unprecedented success in space exploration. And that's it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments down below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time.